upon a Yellow upon Productions upon presents a travel guide to Macau. To start your sightseeing of the old Portuguese portion of Macau, start here in Sanado Square. Actually, the flooring here was built by experts from Portugal back in the 1600s. If you walk this way down the plaza, you'll end up at the ruins of the old church, which is a great walk if it's your first time. If you have some more time, head the other direction uh, to the Ama Temple by the sea. Finding your way around the historic center of Macau is pretty easy. There are some good signposts that direct you to the major sites of interest, and there are some markers that describe the sites of cultural significance. And if you follow the signs for the ruins of St. Paul, after about a 10 minute stroll from the main plaza, you will start to see this old relic peeking out in the background. So the number one tourist site in all of Macau are the ruins of St. Paul. This was a church built in the 17th century, and in 1835, a fire destroyed everything on the church except the stone facade. And now, that stone facade is quite a tourist attraction. One souvenir that every tourist has to bring home from Macau is that perfect picture with the ruins. It's not hard to find the spot to take the picture, just head on up to the staircase and find the 30 or 40 people that have their cameras out. Many people call Macau an east meets west city, and exemplifying that is just behind the ruins of St. Paul. Over this way is a small temple, the Na Cha Temple, uh, built in the late 1800s, right next to the uh, Catholic center of Macau. And just to the left of that temple are the old city walls of Macau, uh, built as early as the late 1500s, still standing today. Top of the hill overlooking the old church is the Mount Fortress. The fortress was built in the early 1600s by the Jesuits to defend Macau. It's on one of the highest uh, natural land points here, and it was used successfully in 1622 to defend Macau from the invasion by the Dutch. Here are some of the cannons that would be reminiscent of what they used then. Today, it's a really good spot to see and get your bearings on Macau and see the Grand Lisboa Hotel there in the background. Being a former Portuguese colony, Macau is also home to a number of Portuguese churches, which are neat to explore on the inside, and also a great way to beat the heat if it's a hot day in Macau. In the historic center, Macau is home to lots of pretty little squares, and Macau gets pretty hot, so you make some nice places to just sit relax under a tree. Another site in Macau, if you're tired of all the Portuguese sites, is the Temple of Ama. This uh, temple, it helped give Macau its name. It's actually been here before the city of Macau came into being, and uh, it has a Chinese junk here on the side because it's right next to the harbor. It's up on four levels. It's a good place to come if you like incense because they burn lots of incense to keep the evil spirits away. After seeing all those sights, you're bound to be hungry, so let's talk about food. One of the most famous foods to eat in Macau is the pork chop bun, as you can see here by the person advertising it in front of the ruins of the old church. Another very famous food from Macau is the Portuguese egg tart, particularly at Lord Stow's Bakery. And if you're staying on the Kotai Strip, good news, there's one inside the Venetian Hotel. But just walking around any place in Macau, you'll find restaurants like this one that sell pork chop buns, and egg tarts. Macau is also famous for the sheets of pressed meat. They are typically sold by weight, and there are tons of shops selling sheets of pressed meat. You will also find many stalls selling almond cookies made on the street. And finally, not really part of the old town of Macau, but worth mentioning, is that if you like casinos, Macau is home to the largest casino in the world, the Venetian at the Koh Tai Strip. And if you don't like gambling, you can always take a ride on the gondola.